We are born as human beings and we know so many things already. People know so many things, but they don't know the actual. This knowledge doesn't come through your reading or through your intellectual pursuit or for your emotional movement, no. It is Shaswat, I mean, it is all the time there. It exists, it will exist. And it is just to be understood, just to be known to yourself what it is. It cannot change. It cannot be remolded. It is what it is. And that is what you know now. Nobody would doubt that. Because those who have got this state, they may doubt, they may call you crazy, they may think in it. But with the open eyes, whatever you say is the truth. In the same way, with an open heart and an open brain, when you know that that is the real truth, and that is what is to be known. For that, according to Sri Krishna, you have to go to various. One is you go on praying to Him. He says, You go on praying to me, and if you give me flowers, I'll take. If you give me water, I'll take. Water you will give me, I'll take. He says clearly, but what will you gain out of that is very important. He doesn't say, if you give me something, I'll give you something. He doesn't say that. So, what should be the state? What should be the condition? He said, if you praise me, if you have bhakti for me, you are giving me presents, you are doing all sorts of things. You are very dedicated, but you should do ananya bhakti. What is ananya? Ananya means when there is not the other. When we are one, when we are connected, then the bhakti you do, that time, whatever music you have of devotion, whatever flowers you give, whatever expression you have, it should be ananya. That's the word he said, that do ananya bhakti. Pushpam phalam toyam. Whatever you give me, I'll take. He'll take everything. He's the one who is the only bhokta, means he's the only enjoyer. But what will you get? He says, when you do ananya bhakti, means when you are one with me. That means you are connected with him. That's how he has explained bhakti. What is bhakti is very clearly. But people don't understand. They, they think that bhakti means you go on singing on the street, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, this and that is bhakti. It's not. If that was real, they would have achieved something, but they did not. Now don't blame Krishna for that. He has clearly said ki it should be ananya bhakti. Only by changing your dress, wearing a particular type of style, that's not okay. That's also outward. It's just to show off. But actually, ananya bhakti is within yourself when you are in that state, when you are one with the divine. Unless and until that state you have achieved, not only that, but established, he doesn't give you anything. Many people have told me, we are doing so much of bhakti yoga, mother, we don't get anything. Really, what sort of bhakti yoga? We do 
read Krishna's Gita every morning, get up four o'clock, take bath, read Krishna's Gita, do this, do that, then we say bhajans, this. We never get anything. So, what is the reason? Reason is that you are not one with God. And when you are one with God, then what does He give you? He won't give you cheap things, which will vanish in no time, but of some eternal nature. So He gives you peace, peace of the heart. He gives you balance. Also, he gives you a tranquil temperament, joy of life. All these things are there within us. If we have the bhakti, which is after being united, after the yoga with the Yogeshwara, this is what one has to understand. So we have to understand we are Sahajogis. We are people responsible for changing the whole world, transforming the whole world into a beautiful place. So we have to change ourselves. We should not find any excuses, we should decide that whatever may happen, we are going to change ourselves, ourselves and not others. Even if that person is your brother, sister, wife, husband, you should change, not the other person. If you start changing, you will set in, in motion this thing. While many people just don't want to change, just don't want to change, they go about with it. Every time you talk to them, they're like that. What are you doing about it? You have to work it out. So for Vishuddhi, I would say that you should see the collectivity of Sri Krishna. He married 16,000 women. Now people might say, Oh God, that's too much. And he had five queens, you see. Actually, the 16,000 women are nothing but his 16,000 powers. Now, he could not have Sahaja Yogis as his children, you see. He was very young, so he thought of this trick that let his powers be born as women and he'll have them as wives, and it was all a big drama. And the five, five queens are the five elements who incarnated just to use his five elements. He had them as his queens. It's a story, a very secretive story, and one has to understand in that line. So his collectivity was so great. Narada was the one who used to create problems, you see. He went and he told, he went and told one of the wives that, Oh, this Krishna, he does not love you. He only loves Radha. You are under wrong ideas that he loves you. He just loves Radha, he does not love anyone. She's the one he really cares for. So they got jealous. And they went and told Sri Krishna that, See, we think that you only love Radha, you are just befooling us and we are not going to be your wives anymore the way you are. In your heart of hearts you love Radha. He said, who told you that? He said, Narada. He said, all right, I know this Narada. So Narada came to see Sri Krishna and Narada then heard a great scream from Sri Krishna. Narada said, what has happened? He said, oh, terrible pain in my stomach. Oh, no, terrible pain, I just can't get over it. So Narada got a fright and he said, Now what should we do? You better tell us the medicine. He said, 
if you can give the dust of your feet for me to drink, I'll be all right. See the tricks of the witness. So, he said, oh God, Narada said, I can't give because I know he is the primordial being. I can't give dust of my feet for him to drink. That would be such a bad thing to do. And I'll have all the sins of the world upon myself. I'm not going to do it. He said, I'm not doing it. He said, anybody, anybody who thinks he's my bhakta can do it. And you can ask my wife, that's a better idea. So Narada went round, he said, oh, he's in terrible pain, why don't you give the rest of your feet? He said, no, nothing doing. See, as it is, he doesn't love us, in his heart is only Radha, and he wants us to give the dust of our feet. We are not mad. We'll have no punyas, we'll have no good deeds for us, and what's going to happen? So, Sri Krishna said, if you cannot give me, then what am I to do now? I've got terrible pain and somebody has to do it. So Narada said, what do you suggest yourself? He said, you go and ask Radha. She's the only person left now. So he went to Gokul. And the Vrindavan, that area, has got the dust of yellow color, like a po pollen, pollen, like pollen, the color of a pollen. And he went and told that he's got pain in the stomach, and now what to do? He said, and what did he say? He said, if you give the dust of your feet, he'll be all right. He said, take it, take it, take it, just now, take it. He said, aren't you worried? He said, about what? He's the primordial being. You're giving your dust. What will happen? She didn't feel guilty. She said, this is all right, take it up. And he scrapped some of the dust. She said, aren't you worried you'll be losing completely in your punyas and all that? She said, oh, don't you worry. And she said, he's the one who makes me do all the sins and he's the one who makes me lo love others and he, do, he does everything. I'm not bothered, it is his lookout. If he has asked for it, better take it. <laughs> so he went to, the, to Krishna. The beauty of the story is here. He went to see Krishna and told him that she's given the thing. He said, love, bring it, bring it, Ali. And he drank. And Krishna, uh, he said, but I was surprised at her answer, that it is you who do all kinds of sins and this and that. And you are the one who makes her do love others and whatever he does is say not things, he doesn't bother about it. She's not worried about papa and punya, she's not worried about sin and good deeds. She said, it's he who does everything, I have nothing to bother. Let him do what he likes, if he wants it, I'll give. I'm surprised she's not bothered. So Sri Krishna said, all right, you just watch just now. Watch my heart. And Sri Krishna opened his heart and in the heart was Radha's. It was a lotus. And the lotus had the pollen and her feet were touching that pollen. If her feet are touching that pollen there, then what is the punyas? And what are the apunyas? If her feet are in her, his heart, then what is to decide? See the beauty. The poetry of the Divine is so beautiful. It's so beautiful. If you understand the poetry, then you will never feel guilt. You are unnecessarily taking out thorns out of flowers. The beauty is so much, it's so beautiful it is. The whole thing is so poetic that to understand that poetry, you have to cut down all these ideas of cursing yourself and saying bad things to yourself. Leave everything to the Divine in full understanding and in full love. You don't need much imagination for that. It's just when you go to your heart and see for yourself how much you've got. Just think. When you think of your guilt, you think, where were you? 
What was your condition? Did you ever expect that you will get realization sitting down in London watching Gems television? And you got it. Just think of the blessings and the grace. And forget about feeling guilty. Just be joyous and happy. And smile at yourself. There should be giggle all the time behind the lips. When these things will happen to you, then you will start feeling the joy within you. And that joy should be felt. It's just a play of the Divine, which is to be seen as a play, and not as something serious and a horrible thing which makes you guilty. No. No more you are going to feel guilty. But if you are doing something wrong against Sahaja Yoga, by which you are bringing bad name to Sahaja Yoga, then you must immediately correct. Such people will be definitely punished, whether they feel guilty or not. There's no doubt about it.